How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to talk to you about rolling versus sliding uh, in physics. Okay. Now, this is a very interesting problem or, very, uh, or topic to talk about because, um, example, it, it requires different things upon different situations. Now, example, let's say you have a system here. We have a ball. This ball has, you know, obviously a radius R and a mass of M. And it is going to, you know, let's say the first situation is, let's say it slides down the ramp. Now, sliding is very important because what sliding means is the object is not rolling. Okay. Now, this can pretty much only happen if your situation is frictionless. Okay. So, if there is no friction, and I want you to think about it like this, if there is no friction, an object that is just, let's say, rolling, or such as say, not rolling, but object, there's no friction, and the object is just going down the ramp. Remember, in order for the object to rotate, so this is radius r, in order for this object to rotate, for, or to even gain some sort of angular velocity, like we see here, okay, there has to be an external force of friction. Friction is usually what causes this. This actually causes a torque. So the force of friction times your radius actually causes a torque. And we know that torque is equal to I alpha. And we can even rewrite this as I omega uh, d omega over dt. So example, um, dt of torque divided by I is equal to a change in omega. So example, this torque can actually produce an object to rotate. So if the object is just sliding, that means there is, uh, it's not rolling, that means there is no friction. Alright, so how you would solve this problem would just, you would just use basic energy. Example, there's only potential energy at the top and at the bottom as the object reaches the bottom. Okay, remember it's still not rolling, it's just sliding. The center of mass um, is moving with the, some velocity v, and it would only have what's called translational kinetic energy. So example, um, if you did this, your potential energy at the top would just equal your translational kinetic energy at the bottom. So that would just be mgh equals mv squared all over two, and then you could just solve for that v, which would be two gh all over V, okay, and that's kind of simple, and this is something that's kind of covered in any traditional or any regular conservation of energy thing, okay. Now, when you take a little AP course, or maybe in an advanced physics course, they get into the concept of rolling. So, sliding is probably the most typical thing, but what happens if the object starts to roll? Well, I kind of talked about it a little bit in that little segment last right there. It's our object is now going to roll down this ramp. So now it does have some angular um, velocity as it rolls down the ramp. So the question is too, what's the difference between rolling? Now, in order for this object to roll, now like we talked about, now um, your coefficient of kinetic friction oops, has to be greater than zero. That means there has to be some friction. So rolling means there must be friction. Kind of like we talked about before, if there's no friction, the object cannot um, rotate. Now, if you're doing this, how would you solve for the velocity final at the bottom? So, example, this object is now moving, but it's also moving with a translational velocity v, but it also has a greater angular velocity as well. It's starting to move, it's starting, and it's continuing to roll. Example, if I drew it out here, this object is still going to be rolling with some angular velocity final. But it's also moving with a translational velocity v. So imagine the center of mass is still going this direction, but the object is still rolling as well. So whenever you solve for this, you know so you have potential energy at the top. So the, obviously the, the object is not rolling initially, and then it will start to roll as it accelerates down the ramp. But at the bottom, you still have your kinetic energy translational, which is the typical, but you also have a new one, kinetic energy rotational. So there's energy being lost due to rotation. So if you do this, we know 
you'd have potential energy at the top is equal to kinetic energy at the bottom plus your kinetic energy of rotation. So we also call this Ke rot or rotation. And so what that means is your object will actually be going slower. So in rolling there must be friction and the object will be going slower. Will be going, I should say, translationally slower than if it were sliding. And that is due to the fact that it's losing energy to rotation. This is why, like in box car derbies and stuff, or in when you do little soapbox derbies, those little cards, they actually uh, only use three wheels instead of uh, four. <laughs> There's one wheel not touching the track if they're really, really good. And the reason being is you're, you're, uh, you're saving energy because that one wheel is not rotating. So solving for this, you'd actually get this. You'd actually have MGH is equal to um, MV squared over two plus the kinetic energy rotation is actually I omega squared over two. Remember, I is just rotational mass, and omega or, uh, is just angular velocity, okay? So actually how you would have to relate this is omega is actually equal to uh, velocity um, over R, so some radius over R. So omega squared is just V squared over R squared. So you'd have to plug this in right here. And remember, I is moment of inertia okay and usually it'll be you remember a moment of inertia is defined as the summation of m times r squared so it can kind of change or it's just the uh, indefinite integral of r squared uh, with respect to mass okay so again you can find this numerous ways so you can do it with calculus or don't have to do it with calculus but usually it's given and so this actually works up to this, I squared times V squared over R squared um, divided by two. So this actually works out to this, I V squared all over two R squared. Okay, so again, you would plug this I in and you'll see that some things cancel out. So that's actually how you'd have to do that. But just know the object will be going slower. And a perfect example, would be something like a typical problem I see, I want to kind of use the back side of this, is we see a ramp problem and you have a block, okay, and then you have, uh, let's say, some sort of disc behind it and they're going to race. So it's a block versus a disc. Now the block will slide and the disc will rotate. Okay, so some, some sort of ramp where that's able to do this. So the block will slide and the disc will rotate. So a lot of physics students will see this. They'll go, okay, and they'll say, which one will win the race? So which one will win, the block or the disc? And a lot of physics students will look at this and they have been thinking, okay, well, if the block and the disc, they have the same mass, so the, the mass of the block is equal to the mass of the disc, and they start off at the exact same height. Okay, but remember, the block is going to slide and the disc will rotate. And they'll say, which one will hit the ground first and why? And obviously, or for example, there's a little race right here. Which one will hit this line first? And obviously, the students will say, oh, no one. They'll be the same. And that will be an answer option, especially on your AP Physics 1 or AP Physics C test. If you have this on multiple choice problem, there will be the same answer right there. So they'll say, oh, these reach the ground at the same time. That is incorrect, okay? Because the block is sliding and the disc is rotating, okay? Like we talked about at the bottom for the block. When the block will have potential energy and all of that potential energy will get transferred to kinetic energy. But the disc is rotating. Now, yes, the disc will have the exact same amount of kinetic energy, sorry, potential energy at the top so the total energy must be the same but it's losing energy to rotation so example solving for this you can see here that the kinetic energy will be less than the kinetic energy of the block so the kinetic energy of the block is actually greater than the kinetic energy of the disk 
because the disc is rotating. So actually, who would win the race would actually be um, the block that's just sliding. Okay. So again, this is a very typical problem how they like to use this, and that's a really good example of what is you know, the main difference between a, uh, something sliding or, or rolling. Just remember, there has to be, when the object is sliding, there's no friction, nothing at all, the object is just falling down, you'd use typical conservation of energy. But if there is friction being involved, and then some object is rolling, it's losing energy to uh, kinetic energy rotational. Okay, so the axle, as the object rotates, that causes energy, and that energy can be calculated. And how you solve for that velocity is kind of a little more algebraic mess, but they'll give you the moment of inertia. You have to plug it in and then solve for your Vs that way. So I hope this video helped. If so, please give me a thumbs up and a like, and please subscribe for more physics content. Thank you. Have a great day.